All right, we have a process that is known as osmosis. So we have a process that's known as osmosis, and it primarily is a facilitated diffusion process. We had said that that um, that uh, some of the water molecules actually can squeeze through the phospholipid bilayer, but primarily they're going to enter and leave the cell through these things we'd called aquaporins. Now, what's different here is that um, water is the solvent for life. So when we talk about the concentration of solvent, so so what is, what is a solvent? Solvent is what stuff is dissolved in. So inside of you, you have you have stuff dissolved in you. So if we think of um, that sugar water I was mentioning a few minutes ago. Maybe you have a lot of sugar in you. You're a sweetie pie <laughs> or not so much. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's being silly. So so with water, it is going to move with its concentration gradient just like anything else. But but because we are made of water, our our cells are filled with water, the fluid around our cells is water. We have this thing called osmosis, and it is a definition. It's a facilitated diffusion of water and only water um, into and out of the cell. So, so when we, uh, through a, a semi-permeable membrane, um, so we'd say the movement of water, only water, when we talk about osmosis, we're not talking about anything else. Into or out of the cell, that's through a semi-permeable membrane in response to its concentration gradient. You say, well, duh, we all know that because we know facilitated diffusion. But here's where it gets weird. If you look at a cell, it ends up, I'd said a sweetie pie, but we're all kind of the same. We're all about 0.9% um, um, solute, dissolved stuff in our, in our cells. So if we say 1%, it's really 0.9, but, but anyway, if we said 1% dissolved stuff, how much water is there? 99%, right? 99%. So, if if you take a cell and you put it in pure spring water, pure water, that would be 100%, right? So, so the water, so we have pure spring water here, 100%. We have a cell, which we had said has the... Um, 1%, we said water is going to do what? It is going to move through the semi-permeable membrane into that cell. When will it stop? We had said that water, anything will diffuse until it is equally distributed. And, and we had said with that that perfume bottle. We said, you open it over in the corner over there of the bathroom, and an hour later you open the door, and it almost knocks you down because the bottle's empty, and the room is full of those perfume molecules. They've spread out evenly. So, back to my question. When, when is that going to stop? When is it going to stop? And that would be when the inside of the cell contains pure spring water, nothing but water. That can't happen. That can't happen. There's always stuff in there. So what's going to happen? That thing's going to burst. It's going to lice. You're going to have water moving in, moving in, moving in, moving in until it lyses. So, um, so what we say is this is that we're going to have lysis occur here because you can never get to 100% water because there's stuff in there. Now, if we talk about 
this situation, well, again, we said in the cell, you have about 1% dissolved stuff, solute, so it's 99%. If you put it in a solution with 3% stuff, that would mean that's 97% water. And so what's gonna happen? This is going to, water is going to leave this cell until this cell has deflated itself to the point that it too is 97% water. So, so we have this situation. So the water will leave, but it doesn't empty out completely. It just leaves until you've concentrated this to the point that it equals the environment around it. So, so in this case, um, it's lost water. Now, neither one of these is really good for your cells, right? So what you... Well, inside of you, you, you know, your cells aren't bursting all the time and they're not shrinking all the time either. So inside of you, what you have is a cell that is 99% water and the area outside is also 99% water and the extracellular fluid. So some water moves out some water moves in, but there is no net movement. It's just moving around. And so when you talk about the cell here, it would be what we call isotonic. And that just means that the, out, the cell and the extracellular fluid are um, contain equal concentrations of solute, of dissolved stuff. Now, the environment around this cell here would be hypo, or would be hypotonic. So it's less concentrated in terms of dissolved stuff. Hypotonic means a lower concentration of solute and then the environment over here would be hypertonic meaning it has a higher concentration of dissolved stuff three percent versus one percent zero percent versus one percent one percent versus one percent so we have these terms and if you're playing along and really thinking about this, you might realize this is a really important consideration in medicine. You put an IV on somebody that isn't 0.9% or, you know, 1%. It's really 0.9%, but I was trying to, uh, to make it easier. So approximately 1%. If you put the wrong IV on somebody, you're gonna have, the, you're gonna have an effect on their cells. And so that's why if you look at IVs, there'll be a physiological saline. That's what they call it. So that means it's 0.9%, that, you know, approximately 1%. So osmosis is really important to, uh, for medicine. It's a, it, and it's just a passive process that happens. So, um, yeah, so we have one more thing to talk about, and I think I'm gonna talk about it before in this video, and that is, is called filtration. And we all know what that is. Did you make coffee this morning? You put water above, and it, the water pressure on that little cone um, the gravity forces it through um, through a membrane, right, or through that paper. Well, this is the same thing that happens in your kidneys and in your capillaries. You have fluids that are forced um, through the walls of a capillary um, due to hydrostatic pressure, um, and and it's you know, it's just what, what we said, and um, it's just the pressure of the water above, you know, in your coffee maker, forces its way through 
the walls of the paper that you have the copy in. Um, and, and so this does happen in your capillaries and in your kidneys. I've said in your kidneys, you're gonna filter everything out and then you're gonna actively recover the stuff that you wanna hang on to. So these are the four passive ways of moving stuff through, you know, into and out of cells. We're gonna now talk about active transport. Again, going back to that very first part of the last lecture where we talked about those transport proteins. Now, we before we were talking about the channels, now we say the transport proteins, the ones that reach out and grab something and pull it in. 